Hey everyone, today we're talking about missing values in a data set. These are values that aren't available for a certain column or variable in a data set, and they generally appear as empty values, null values, or NAN values. But not all missing data is the same. There's actually four different types of missing data. The first is missing completely at random, or MCAR data. This type of data occurs when the reason for the data to be missing from a column has nothing to do with the rest of the data. It seems that there's no underlying reason for a column value to be empty. Because of this, all the samples in our data set have an equal chance of having a missing value for that specific column. Let's take our example data set. Let's say we have holiday spending missing from different ages and genders and professions. Here, it's not really clear to see if there is an underlying reason for these people to not have reported their holiday spending. It looks like it's random across the data set. Here's an example where we could say that the holiday spending is missing completely at random. The second type of missing data is missing at random or MAR data. And this type of data occurs when the reason that a value is missing from a column has to do with some random characteristic of the group that's being studied. Generally, the missing column value can be explained by looking at the other columns in the data. So if we go back to our example, let's say we don't have holiday spending filled in for people that are under 30. If we see that this missingness is only restricted to people of a certain age group, we can say that maybe there's a characteristic in this age group that makes them not want to report their holiday spending in a survey. Since the missingness in the holiday spending column can be explained by the age column, we say that this data is missing at random. The third type of missing data is called missing not at random or MNAR data. And this data occurs when the reason that the data in a column is missing has to do with the column itself. So let's say in our data set that Barb, the doctor, did not want to report her income because it's high. The reason that the income is missing has to do with the income itself. She didn't report it because the income itself is high. And this is the difference between missing not at random and missing at random data. For missing not at random, the column that's missing itself is the reason that the column is missing. For missing at random data, the column itself is not the reason the data is missing. Rather, other columns in the data can explain why the column is missing. So in our case, for Barb not reporting the income, that's missing not at random instead of missing at random. The fourth type of missing data is structurally missing data. This data is data that is expected to be missing, or there's a logical reason why the data may be missing. In our example, we see that Peter is a student and unemployed. If we don't see an income value reported for him, we can say that we expected that value to be empty since he does not have a job. Because of this, this is structurally missing data. So what are some ways that we can fix this missing data? Well, the first way to handle missing data is through deletion. And there's a couple of ways to do this. The first is list-wise deletion, also known as complete case analysis. This is where we remove a row from the data set if it has a missing value for any of the columns. This approach can generally work when we have missing completely at random data because that data can be kind of hard to fill in since we don't know why the data is missing. However, the downside to listwise deletion is that if you have a lot of missing values in your data set spread across a lot of different columns, you can greatly reduce the size of your data set. If you're using this data to train a machine learning model, having less training data could severely degrade the performance of that model. Alternatively, if you see that you have a column that's missing a lot of values and that column is not very important to your analysis, you can just delete that column altogether. The other way that we can handle missing values is by using a process called imputation. An imputation is a strategy for filling in the missing values in a data set. And there's many different strategies for imputation. The first is by replacing the missing values in a column with a fixed value. So back in our holiday spending data set, if we didn't have the profession filled in for 
a specific person, we could replace the profession, the missing profession value with the word unknown. The second form of imputation is replacing a missing value with the mean, median, or mode of the column where the value is missing. So in our data set, let's say we had income missing for some people. We can infer the value by taking the mean of the income column for the rest of the data point. And here you can see that filling in the value with the mean is not always a great option because it distorts the data set and can add a lot of bias since we're filling in the mean for specific records where the mean income is probably not close to the correct income. You can also forward fill or backwards fill a value for a column in a data set. This generally works for time series or ordered data. Let's say you have a list of timestamps and after a certain row, the timestamps are missing. You can take the last timestamp that's provided and fill in the rest of the rows with that timestamp, which is known as forward fill. Or if the opposite is true and you don't have the timestamps before a certain row, you can take the row where the timestamp is filled in and use that value for the rows before it as well. That's known as backwards fill. You can also use what's called hot deck imputation. This is where you look for a record with similar characteristics as the record where a certain column value is missing and fill in the value that way. So in our data set, let's say we don't have an income listed for Robert, but we see that Robert is an engineer and he's around 30 years old. If we can find someone else in the data set with the same characteristics, we can use their income as Robert's income. So here we can see that Teresa is 25 years old and is also an engineer and makes $100,000. So we can fill in the income variable for Robert with $100,000 since those records are fairly similar. An alternative to hot deck imputation is cold deck imputation where the procedure is the same, but instead of looking for a similar record in the same data set, you would look for a similar record in a different data set. So in our case, let's say a survey was done on a different day you would look in that data set instead of the data set we have here. Finally, the last thing you can do is you can actually train a machine learning model to predict the missing value based on the other columns in the data set. If you have rows where all the values are filled in, you would use that as the training set and then use that trained model to predict the value for rows that have that column value missing. However, this approach is generally time consuming and resource intensive. So that's something to keep in mind. In the end, to determine which approach is right for your data set and your use case, there's a few questions you'd need to ask. You need to ask how important is the missing data? How much data is missing? And do I know why the data is missing? If you find that the data is not very important or just a few values are missing, you can delete the row or the column that has the missing data values. However if, you, however, if you have a lot of data missing and the data is important, you may opt for an imputation technique. That's all for our overview of missing values in a data set. If you found this video helpful, please give a like and a share, and please be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.